Hello guys, what's up? I'm your friend Manak from Civil Center and I welcome back to our channel. So today we are going to discuss about double AC blocks. So let's get started. So double AC blocks are also known as autoclaved aerated concrete blocks. So autoclaved means they are burned in furnace and aerated means they have a lot of voids. So it's basically a product made out of foam concrete. Now these material is being increasingly used in building constructions. So today we'll give an unbiased analysis of the advantages and disadvantages of double AC blocks and how to use them properly. So let's get started. So for getting started as per Indian standards if you want to check out the standard dimensions of double AC blocks you can refer to IS 2185 part 3 clause 3.2 there you will find the sizes of the double AC blocks the double AC blocks basically come in lengths of 400 mm 500 mm or 600 mm and the heights are exactly the half the length that is the 200 mm 250 mm and 300 mm the width can be varied from 100 mm 150 mm or 200 to 250 mm so these are the standard sizes in market you may also find different sizes of double AC blocks now let us consider the advantages of double AC blocks over fly ash bricks or red clay bricks so basically the double AC blocks are porous in nature and also they require less quantity of mortar because the surfaces are smooth and leveled so definitely they require less quantity of mortar for the joints and the curing required is also less only some sprinkles of water are enough in comparison to the red bricks or the fly ash bricks and the joints are also less and it also can be handled pretty comfortably by the workers now it can also be cut easily with the help of a drill or ordinary saw so these were the advantages and it is also a lightweight material so having said said that it puts less amount of load on the structure as we know most of the structures in today are frame structures so in uh, frame structures the main load is bared by beams and columns so the beams columns all the rcc members take the load that is the transfer of the load comes from the slab to the roof beam from the roof beam to the columns from the columns to the footings and from the footings to the soil so this is the phenomenon of load transfer so there is no role of masonry works like red bricks or double ac blocks in the load transfer so in the case where we don't require or masonry material to bear any loads so the lightweight really helps because it actually reduces the size of the members as it puts less load so the size of the beams and columns can get reduced if double AC blocks are used so it is an advantage of using double AC blocks that it is lightweight easy to handle requires less labor and also the sizes of the structural members may get reduced on the use of this now having said that there are many complaints of customers who are using double AC blocks that it develops some kind of cracks so if proper procedure is not followed during the use of these double AC blocks it may result in some problems because first of all it is a non load bearing material too that is it cannot be used for bearing loads its bearing capacity is very low if you see in IS 2185 for an average we can take the bearing capacity as 4 Newton per mm square which is very low so it is not used for load bearing constructions and it is also a little brittle in nature and in some cases there are different qualities of these double AC blocks available in the market so before procurement of the double AC blocks we should ask our vendors for providing our MTC. Now what is MTC? MTC is basically 
manufacturing test certificate we need to get that certificate whether they have made that double ac blocks properly now what is the proper procedure we'll discuss very briefly first of all after making the double ac blocks it should be subjected to a curing period of minimum 28 days and after that it should also be allowed to dry for 15 days because this is done so that there is no dry shrinkage to avoid expansion and contraction this should be done so if we get the manufacturing test certificate we can get the quality assurance of our wc blocks so if you use good quality wc blocks there will be no expansion and contraction and there will be no cracks and another thing related to the wc blocks is how it is applied in our building now the general floor to floor height of a building is actually 3 meters or 3.2 meters let us take 3 meters so we should provide stub columns or runners to support these wc blocks as you can see here they haven't provided any such beams or columns another solution to avoid cracks in the wc blocks is that suppose the height from here to here is 3 meter and this length is that is the depth of the beam minus the slab is 0.2 so suppose from here to here we have 2.8 meter and the floor to floor height being 3 meter so we have 2.8 meter where the casting of the masonry works using double ac blocks are to be done now assuming that there is no running lintel provided we have space of 2.8 meter now in this 2.8 meters we can provide rcc runners at 1.2 meter height so at 1.2 meter height we can provide a rcc runner that is a narrow width suppose say 100 mm width rcc beam here so that the load from the ever portion of the wc blocks that is the self weight doesn't come to the bottom part because they are very brittle in nature and have low bearing capacity so it may result in cracks so for the safety purpose we can provide such runner beams of rcc and also we can also provide columns or it is also called step columns in between the spans which are more than 6 meters so if we have any span this span is less than 6 meter so if we have any span which is more than 6 meter we can provide a small or narrow column in between which is also known as stub column so that we can divide the area into two parts so if we provide stub columns at intervals more than 6 meters and also if we provide one number of rcc runner beams in between the total height where the casting of the double ac blocks are to be done then we can avoid such cracks so friends in this video we have discussed some of the advantages and disadvantages of double ac blocks and also we have discussed how to avoid cracks in these double ac blocks so friends as we had already told you earlier we don't want our channel to be a one way source so please feel free to comment what do you know about the various advantages and disadvantages of WC blocks and if you are a site engineer or if you are working in any construction company how was your experience of using WC blocks is it better than red blicks or not please let us know in our comment section and stay tuned to our channel bye bye